Hamilton and Eleanor for doing this. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. I love living here. I love it. You know, I've lived in India, Canada, Glebe, and, and it's so fantastic here because, because of you guys. Actually, it's an honor to be here amongst friends. But what really makes it special is the, the right and the honor for everyone to honor their own spiritual truth, isn't it? It's accepted here, like nowhere else. You're also tuned in, <laughs> you know? You know when there's a shark in the ocean, it's sharky, you know? You know when there's a snake in the bush, it's snaky. And I, I love that, and tuning in works. But you know, I don't know because my friend lived here, near the mountain. She had to move to New Zealand. She said it was too intense. The mountain. She said it was melting her. I don't know. I think it was the acid. <laughs> I got this great house now, though, because she had to move to New Zealand. It's fabulous. It's fucking intense, though. <laughs> you know, it's intense is like this false renunciation towards spirituality. Did you know what I mean? Give things up in hopes for higher truth. Sometimes they just come back to bite you, don't they? And um, so I joined the ashram like ages ago. No more sex, no more drugs. Okay, it's not really going on anyway. It's still not. Anyway, we'll, we can talk later. So these two guys, they come to my apartment in Toronto. They're going to help me move out. Great. First guy, this is true. He goes straight to my knickers drawer. Chucks it in the van, you know. <laughs> I thought. Then I realized why there were two guys. So I don't have sex with one of them. I'm gonna do celibacy with these guys, you know. And um, I thought, oh my god. Before he goes to the next drug, oh my, like my Valium and pot there, you know. And I just like, I'm coming. Shit, you know, I better smoke it. I'm giving it up, right? <laughs> coming. And then, I was so stoned. I'm going to the temple. I was fucking passed out. Which was great, because I slept till 3 a.m. But that's when the morning prayers begin, isn't it? Oh, it's right on cue. But you can't have tea or coffee. You can't have it. They're really serious. You can't have it. How am I gonna do this, you know? How am I gonna do spiritual life without caffeine? I still don't know. I really, anyone who does a caffeine-free life, if I had a hat, I'd take it all for you. But anyway, I had to go to India. I thought, they have chai, you know? The British dumped it there for a reason. And there it is. The Ganges. The sun's rising. Nescafe. <laughs> you have Nescafe? Yes, right on. And there's cafe, and there's chai, and there's juice. <laughs> juice out of the same machine. That's actually what he said. Uh, what's in that aluminium pot there? The tea. Okay, I'll have two. You drink that? Yes, madam. Clean the palate. Okay, I don't know. They're into tongue scraping. I'll have two. Woo! <laughs> That's so good. The Aussie girls come. Hi, Vishnu, can I have two Nez Chai's? I'm like, get the stuff he drinks in the aluminium pot. Oh, don't drink that, Loki. That's the dirty water. He washes the plates in it. Yes, madam, clean the palate. 